Yo, what is going on guys? SMH Super Mario Hoops back with some more hoops and today we're hopping right back into our top 50 list in NBA history and today's player is none other than Elvin Hayes, the Big E as some call him. But as for Elvin Hayes, where is he on my list? I currently have him ranked at number 34. Before we get into this video, I'm going to need you guys to hit the like button, feel free to subscribe and also hit the notification bell as well because it really does wonders for me and I think it could for you as well if you enjoy my content so without further ado let's get into elvin hayes now elvin hayes was a 12-time nba all-star from 1969 until 1980 across three different decades as you can see and he also made all nba teams six times three on the first team and three on the second team he made three times on all nba first team in 1975 1977 and 1979 while he made all nba second team in 1973 1974 and 1976 he also made all defensive second team twice in 1974 and 1975. In fact, he actually led the league in scoring one time in 1969 and was a two-time rebounding leader in 1970 and 1974. And add on to all this, he was an NBA champion in 1978 with the Washington Bullets. Now, going back to the beginning of Elvin Hayes' time in the NBA, he has the fifth highest scoring rookie season in NBA history with 28.4 points per game. And outside of Kareem, the very first year after Hayes did this, no player in NBA history has hit this mark since. In fact, the only other player that has come close to doing so was Michael Jordan with 28.2 points per game in his rookie year. He's also one of six NBA players to average over 20 points per game and 12 rebounds per game for their career. The list includes Wilt Chamberlain, Bob Pettit, Walt Bellamy, Elgin Baylor, Moses Malone, and of course, Elvin Hayes. His 12 consecutive All-Star appearances in the first 12 seasons of his career makes him one of only five players in history to ever do this for the NBA. The others being Bob Cousy, Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, Isaiah Thomas, and then of course, Elvin Hayes. Now, starting with the beginning of Elvin Hayes' career, his early days with the Rockets were spectacular individual play without much team success. He averaged about 27 and a half points a game, a little over 16 rebounds per game, over two assists per game on about 44% shooting from the field. They did make the playoffs in Hayes' rookie season, but the fact that the Rockets couldn't find much success is 100% not to the fault of Elvin Hayes. In his four early years there, his best teammate was arguably between Don Kojis and Stu Lance. And while Kojis was an all-star alongside Hayes in 1969, if these two players were your best form of supporting cast in four seasons, Seasons worth then you're in trouble I mean I'm sure a lot of you guys don't know who at least one or maybe both of those guys are however his days with the bullets were nothing short of impressive and in terms of accolades Hayes accomplished all of them that I listed at the start of this video with the bullets except for his first four years of all-star appearances with the Rockets along with a scoring crown and one of his two rebounding crowns he averaged 21 points per game about 13 rebounds a game two assists per game two and a half blocks per game a steal per game on about 46% shooting from the field and 50% true shooting. In terms of MVP shares, he received votes on seven different years and was a top three finisher twice in his career in 1974-1975 and also 1978-1979. In terms of those two years though, in the first one of those two, Hayes received more first place votes than the second place finisher, Dave Cowens. In terms of some all-time stats, just to list them off, he has 16,279 rebounds, which is good for six all-time. His 12.5 rebound per game average puts him 14th all-time. His 1,771 blocks puts him 28th all-time. And his two blocks per game puts him 24th all-time. Now, this is kind of crazy because the part about the blocks is extremely impressive considering they weren't counted the first five years of his career. So if you multiply at least two blocks per game because Elvin Hayes in his first several seasons averaged over two blocks a game, but multiply the two blocks by five seasons worth and he would be sitting at 14th all-time with 2,181 blocks. Now you're probably saying that would only be true if he played every game in the season, but that's Elvin Hayes. I mean, he's one of the most durable NBA players and athletes of all time. In fact, he only missed nine games over the course of his entire 16 year career. That's basically like missing one game every two seasons. And another fun fact is that Elvin Hayes has the longest streak of consecutive NBA seasons playing at least 80 games, which was all 16 years of his career. 
remind you this is before a lot of the modern day technology to allow for some players to have better nutritional advancements than a half century ago like elvin hayes had to deal with and while he accomplished this he was primarily a starter for every year of his career besides the final nba season in 1983 1984 and even though he sits at 22nd on the all-time games played list with 1303 not one person that's ranked above him retired within a five-year period after hayes actually the only person that retired within a decade after him with more games played was kareem abdul jabbar while doing all this hayes sits at six all-time with 10,970 one two-point field goals made now lebron is only 48 away from passing him and most likely will next season but the only other player that was able to make a three-point shot that ranked above him other than that is michael jordan the other four were wilt kareem Shaq, carl malone and as we know like none of them are great three-point shooters by any means and all of them played longer than elvin hayes as well besides will chamberlain and to add to his defensive value hayes had a 97.4 defensive rating for 12th all time 83.7 defensive win shares which is good for eighth all time and 120.8 win shares in total good for 48th all time now let's move on to discuss elvin hayes impact in the playoffs in terms of what he improved over the course of his playoff career his points per game check his rebounds per game, check. His assists per game, check. His steals per game, check. His blocks per game, check. Now, of course, his minutes increase too, which might not make this quite as special, but his field goal percentage, his true shooting percentage, his win share per 48 rating, his PER, his BPM, I mean, they all increased in the playoffs as well. And he was simply just about as consistent as you could get. He averaged over 20 points per game in 16 of 18 playoff series and over 10 rebounds per game in all 18. He also made both the conference finals and NBA finals three times in the same three years, 1975, 1978, and 1970. In 1975, they upset the one-seed Celtics in six games, where the Celtics couldn't stop both Hayes and Phil Chenier. Hayes did most of his damage early in the series, averaging about 31.5 points a game and 12 rebounds per game in the first two games to build a 2-0 lead, while Phil Chenier was big to close the series out, dropping 20 or more in the last three games, including a 32-point Game 5. But the 1975 Finals were seen as an ultimate upset, as the Bullets were swept by the Warriors, who had a 48-34 record that year as opposed to the bullets who were 60 and 22. Hayes was the second best player in the series however behind only Rick Barry for the Warriors and Rick Barry was putting on one of the best finals performances ever so I guess there is some reason behind that. Some critique in this series too is the poor play by Wes Unseld who in modern day terms was essentially exposed defensively. However Unseld had a lot of great moments after this but this was just seen as a disappointing end of the season especially since Hayes played very well in this series. In the 1978 Eastern Conference Finals Hayes and Bob Dandridge disposed of the Dr. J 76ers while Unseld missed three games this series due to an injury. In the finals Hayes led the team in points per game, rebounds per game, blocks per game, and ultimately led them to their first championship. However, this finals MVP is still a bit weird to this day. Now, nearly every database will say Unseld was the MVP, but when watching this game live, it says Bob Dandridge was the MVP, but then when you look at the box score and analyze the stats, you're wondering how Elvin Hayes did not get the finals MVP. But regardless, all three of them were great to lead to a title. In 1979, the Bullets became the third team ever to come back from a 3-1 deficit against George Gervin and the Spurs, and Gervin was pretty good outside of game six. He averaged 31 points per game on 52% shooting for the series and even dropped 42 points in game seven. Hayes that game at 25 points, 15 rebounds, and 7 blocks, while Dandridge dropped 37 points to win the game as well. But in the finals, the Sonics got revenge, Dennis Johnson was finals MVP, and Hayes averaged still about 20 and 12, but he shot under 40% from the field for the first time in his playoff career. And to be honest, the Sonics were a true team. I mean, DJ, the floor general, Gus Williams, a prolific scorer, Jack Sigma took on Elvin Hayes to make his life hard for him, and especially with that height advantage, Fred Brown the sharpshooter, Paul Silas for more leadership and interior defense, and so on. So when it comes to Elvin Hayes, I believe that he is pretty underrated. I mean, as we know, no player can win a title by themselves, but he had some legendary performances and was pretty much always consistent. I think of it like Tim Duncan before Tim Duncan. I mean, he wasn't a stretch big, he wasn't flashy, but he was one of the most consistently good players in NBA history, probably even more durable than Tim Duncan. 
Of course, Duncan is a better defender, but Hayes was still a great defender and held his own for perimeter defense more than most bigs you see today. Guys like Gobert and Jared Allen are great on interior defense, but they don't possess that defensive versatility. Along with elite scoring, durability, like I said, I mean, one of the nicknames he had was the Bionic Man for a reason, and I think Hayes is for sure underrated. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think about Elvin Hayes. If this is the first you're hearing about him, or at least to this degree, then let me know. But without further ado, I think I'm going to end this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'm out. Peace.